Welcome back to Island Bike Life. On today's episode, we're gonna take a look at the all new Forbidden Druid. I got this particular test bike from Carter over at Black Cycles in the Comox Valley. Black Cycles is one of only two dealers here on the island and one of a very few in British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest where you can get your hands on this all new bike. I actually ended up having this bike for two different review periods. The first I took it out on the local trails in Cumberland in the Comox Valley Unfortunately, due to the Pacific Northwest uh, weather, a lot of the footage that I used that day ended up being uh, unwatchable due to some rain and some mud issues. Luckily enough for me, Carter let me hook it up once again, and I took it for a second, more long-term ride on my local trails down here in Nanaimo. The all-new Forbidden Druid comes from a really strong pedigree. One of the owners and chief engineers, Owen, comes from the Norco Bicycle Range. Some of the design features and a lot of the philosophies do carry over for some of the things that he did at Norco. That includes individual sizing, which alters the uh, front center and balance points on the bike. They achieve this not by necessarily changing the length of the rear triangle, but moving the bottom bracket forward and back depending on your sizing. The thing that most people notice right away with the Forbidden Druid is of course the unique linkage. This is something that you can find on an Orco Orum downhill bike, and it's never really been done on a trail bike as far as I know. They talk about this as the trifecta suspension system. It consists essentially of their high pivot, which is the thing that you see most notably, the rate control linkage, and the idler pulley. All of these things kind of work in tandem to provide a very progressive, really high anti-squat uh, pedaling platform. What is also unique is that instead of necessarily moving upwards and out of the way on the suspension curve, the rear travel actually moves rearward, which increases a lot of stability in high speed chunk and really uh, enables the bike to feel almost bottomless, more so certainly than what the travel numbers are. The bike comes with 130 mils of travel in the rear with an optional uh, front setup of either 140 or 150, depending on whatever the rider's preference might be. The sizing on the Druid is pretty progressive. It's not the most slackest or longest bike on the market, but in a size large, you're gonna be looking at somewhere around a 470 mil reach with an overall stack height of 630, a rear center of 438, and a pretty reasonable stand over at 727. This is of course gonna be running a 44 millimeter offset fork or perhaps a 42 if you're running a rock shocks and the large wheelbase is gonna be 1221. So it's not overly long and it definitely is a capable and fun bike on the trail, that's for sure. Normally I would talk about build kits and various uh, pricing factors, but there really is only one for the Forbidden Druid at this point. The frame is about $4,000 and comes in everything from small, medium, and large, with extra large coming later this summer or early fall. Most dealers that have the Forbidden Druid, while they will provide you a frame, are gonna offer you some sort of in-house build kit. That's the same for Carter and the guys over at Black Cycle. This bike was decked out right to the nines as this is Carter's personal bike. It had agent wheels, uh, Industry 9 hubs, Cush Core, XTR brakes, uh, full Eagle axis drivetrain and dropper post, and really was sparing no expense. A bike like this, as it's built, is gonna cost you a pretty penny, but if you can find good deals on Pink Bike or through your local shop, you can get a bike built with the cost of the frame for somewhere around $7,000 Canadian. The climbing on this bike was the first thing that I noticed that absolutely blew me away. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me say that the best pedaling platform I've found to date was the Yeti Switch Infinity Link. And in general, that still does hold true. However, the whole suspension setup really is quite unique on this Forbidden Druid and it absolutely blew my mind. <coughs> Steep, uh single track really is no problem for the Druid. Even wide open, there's no perceivable 
efficiency loss in your pedal strokes at all. Super firm, really nice. The Annie squat on this is out of control. Uh, the pedaling feels so firm and so nice. Even with a shock setup that is traditionally a little bit softer than I would have normally thought to run. Fire road climbing on the Druid is kind of what I expected it to be based on some of my first impressions of the suspension. It's pretty damn good. Um, the only bike that I've found that kind of has that similar feel uh, would be the Switch Infinity Link Yeti bike. It has a DPX2 in the front and more often than not those bikes uh, that run that shock I find it's about a one-to-one -one ratio of PSI to my body weight right around 190 pounds with all of my gear. On this particular bike, in order to make it feel the way that it's meant to feel, not only climbing but when descending, I actually dropped that down by about 20 or 25 PSI. It caused the bike to sit further into its sag point. However, with the rate control and the high pivot on this bike, the pedaling platform was really firm. People talk about, oh, it felt like a hardtail or I never felt the need to lock it out, and myself included. But I don't know uh, that I've necessarily been on a bike that pedaled quite as efficiently as this thing. I don't really understand uh, the voodoo that's going on with the suspension fully, but uh, it really is next level. And the climbing on this bike, in terms of trail bike or cross country bike, is probably one of the best I've ever been on in all of my time riding bikes. When it came to the general trail riding, I'm talking about traversing an area, not necessarily going up or down. Uh, this bike was so much fun. The efficient pedaling translates naturally into uh, this sort of environment. But as you get past a certain point uh, in the suspension, it really does become quite uh, soft, but uh, not so much so that you're blowing through your travel. In all situations, I found that the suspension was really supportive uh, in that in corners or coming off of jumps or drops, uh, it allowed me to really sink into the bike, but I never felt like I was going through anything that was too harsh. You know, Forbidden Druid is really just an excellent little trail bike. I know it's kind of being geared towards aggressive riding, which it can obviously do. But to just rip around your local trails, what a great all around bike. So in this trail riding environment where you're just out having fun, ripping on trails, cross country trail, or you know aggressive downhill stuff, it really felt quite planted and firm. And I couldn't really wrap my mind around what I was feeling in the pedals. You really do have to ride it to understand it. Uh, it's just really supportive and really quite fun. Uh, one of the more um, enjoyable trail bikes uh, that I've ever ridden for sure. As for the descending, this bike was set up with a 150 mil fork and 130 in the rear. So 
it definitely liked to get a little bit rowdy. Now, I didn't take this thing on the absolute craziest, chunkiest stuff that I could find. I just didn't have enough time or the ability to do so. However, it was very stable in every situation that I took it on, including some pretty great trails in Cumberland and here in the island. I took it off jumps that I was comfortable with and off bigger drops as well, and it never let me feel like I was on a shorter travel uh, trail bike. The 29 inch wheels also help this bike just move through the trail really quickly. It eats up everything and with the longer fork on this particular setup, the head tube angle was relatively slack, right around 65 and a half degrees. Nothing too crazy, uh, but not too steep either. Descending wise, it, again, it's, a, it's kind of a bike that you have to be on and feel to really understand what I'm trying to say about the way the trifecta system works. It's nothing that is so clearly different than other bikes that you've ridden, but almost in a good way. It, it doesn't make it feel like you're trying to learn to ride your bike again, but it does allow you to feel very confident and certainly gives you the ability or the perceived ability to push the bike through things that perhaps you might not think a bike of this category might be capable of doing. It can do it, and beyond that, I have absolutely no doubt. Compared to other bikes that you can get a frame-only option in, the Druid really is a pretty good value. Uh, right around $4,000 Canadian, depending on your dealer, but that is the recommended retail price right from Druid themselves. When looking at other bikes, Yeti, Santa Cruz, Norco, Rocky Mountain, for example, you're gonna be right in around that price, give or take a few hundred dollars on the lower end, uh, right around $3,500, $3,600 for a Rocky, depending on the model. And again, up to about $4,200, $4,300 for a Yeti and a Santa Cruz, right around the same price at $4,000. And so the value really is there at $4,000 Canadian for a full carbon, pretty unique uh, startup company that does have a good pedigree and warranty behind it. Uh, the value is definitely there uh, if you're into a frame only build up your own bike kind of situation. So what are my final thoughts on the Forbidden Druid? Uh, I really like this bike a lot. Uh, I think I can definitely see myself having one in the future. I don't know that it has enough of a spread from my current Yeti SB150 to make it a reasonable purchase right now. But if uh, I was to ever sell that and replace it with a similar type bike, this one would definitely be on the top of the list. Um, if I was to own one myself, I think I would probably set it up at 140 and 130 instead of the 150 up front, only because uh, I think it would perform a little bit better in that trail bike type category. I don't know that I would buy one of these to use at for enduro racing or really crazy downhill or park days. I don't think that it's really meant for that, even though it certainly can do it, I think. Uh, I think the 140-130 setup, at least for here on Vancouver Island, would be just about perfect. It's going to increase your reach a little bit. It's going to steepen up uh, both your C-tube and your head tube angle, which is going to make it climb just that much better. And with the descending prowess that it has, the little bit uh, less travel up front is not going to hinder it in any way, shape or form. It really is a great bike and uh, I definitely would recommend trying to get on one. And once the company uh, pumps out some more frames this fall, if you're interested, get a pre-order in. They're gonna sell out again really fast. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Well, I hope you like this look and review of the all new Forbidden Druid. Uh, if you wanna take this one out for a demo, like I said, go see Carter up at Black Cycle in the Comox Valley. If you like what I'm doing here, think about hitting the subscribe and the like button. Leave me a comment down below and come and find me on Instagram. And as always, thanks again for watching. Now let's go hit the trails.